everybody, this is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and I have a first week of uh, March Thrift Hall to show you. The music that we started off with is a recording from late 1925. It's by the uh, Victor Salon Orchestra, and the title of the tune is called Nola, a very popular instrumental from that time period. I'm a big collector of old 78 records, and I like to play them uh, while I'm showing you my stuff. But we'll turn it down so it's not too annoying. And I will dive right in and show you what I have. Um, let's see, right over here, which is not sitting out because I didn't have room for it, is a great big ceiling light fixture, probably from the 1960s. Uh, I picked this up today for two bucks. You know the way these worked. That's my ceiling. And this is what it would look like when it was in place. Probably in a kitchen or real, really anywhere that you had a ceiling fixture. That will probably sell for, oh, I don't know, 15 bucks or so. I wanna start off and show you this, oops, <laughs> one piece that was actually in a thrift hall um, previously. This is a, uh, I thought it was Hazel Atlas, looks like Hazel Atlas to me, feels like Hazel Atlas, smells like Hazel Atlas, no, I'm kidding, it doesn't smell like anything. But it doesn't have the Hazel Atlas mark on it, and I was really uncertain because I didn't know what that meant right there. After close inspection, those are actually three concentric C's, and they those three concentric C's actually stand for, for the Continental Can Company. And the Continental Can Company acquired Hazel Atlas in 1956. And that's the label that they used from, I think, 1957 into the early 60s. So actually, it is an old Hazel Atlas piece, but after they were sold to the Continental Can Company. There's something else on the counter here that was made by Hazel Atlas. Can you figure out what it is? It's these two right here. These are called Fine Rib. And these are glasses from the 1950s when Hazel Atlas was still Hazel Atlas. It's clear glass and this is a fired on uh, painted finish. I paid a dollar each and those two will probably sell for about 10 bucks. I've seen the pitcher and eight glasses sell for close to a hundred if, if you can get the whole set. I don't know who made this, it's not Fire King. But it has that look, uh, maybe it's glass bake, I don't know. It doesn't say Hazel Atlas on the bottom, so I'm not certain. If anybody knows, I'd love to know, but it just has that 1960s look to it. This has a look of the 1880s, but it's actually made in the 1980s. Uh, this particular piece right here is called Grape and Cable or Grape and Thumbprint. And it's an old Westmoreland mold from about 1880, but made by the Mosier Company, I think in the 80s or early 90s. And a cream and sugar sells for about $25, so I ought to be able to get mm, 10, 12 bucks just for that creamer, and that was uh, $1. Give you a little closer look at that. Uh, let's see, I'm kind of going, I'm zipping all around here. Let's go back over to these. Uh, they're not marked on the bottom, but I am fairly certain who made them. I think that this is made by Ukag Co. U-C-A-G-C-O. And if you want to know what their label looks like, looks like that. This kitten that I showed you before has that label. That actually stands for the United Glass, the United China and Glass Company. And it says, you know, you can see, let me try to get it to focus. Okay, Ceramics Japan, U-C-A-G-C-O, United China and Glass Company. That was not a Japanese company. It was an American company based in New York and New Orleans, and they actually were great importers of Japanese goods. The company was sold in 1956 to another company, so when you see those foil labels, you know it was made prior to 1956. I think that this is who made this. I've got other pieces that have, that have this pearlescent 
uh, finish with the sort of silvery gold touches to the edge. So I think that's who made these. Safe to say they're 1950s Japan. Inexpensive little Christmas dishes, and I paid a dollar each for those. I'm not sure what I'll sell them for. I don't know what these are. I know they look like light bulbs. They're not light bulbs. I paid a dollar each. I really just bought them for myself because I like them, but I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Uh, even this right here is blue. The, the glass is blue. Uh, and I think one of these, I loosened it so you could actually, yeah. You can see here on this one, these lids come off. And it looks like there's a hole there, but there's a, a padded inside. So I don't know if you were supposed to put like oil and you would pour the oil out and it would come through this hole, but then I don't know why that padded piece is in there. So these are a mystery to me. I, there's no marks on them. I really liked them. I was attracted to them because they have a kind of an industrial look to them and I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I don't, don't even know what they are. But anyway, they were kind of cool. Picked them up for myself. That is a piece of elegant depression glass that is um, made by the new Martinsville company and the pattern is called Prelude. And I have several pieces of, well not several, maybe four pieces of this already in the old curiosity shop. Really pretty uh, elegant depression glass, high quality depression glass etched. This is the kind of stuff that was sold by John Wanamaker and Macy's and other fine department stores in the 1930s. Speaking of fine department stores, this came from one. But before I tell you about this, let me tell you about these four trivets over here. Uh, this one is made by Wilton, and I think this one is as well. All probably made in the 30s or 40s. Really nice original finishes on them. I paid $2 each. Eight bucks for the four of these. That's okay. That one sells for about 20. That one sells for about 20. I haven't found any examples of these selling, but I'm sure they'll sell for 10 to 20 bucks as well. Uh, these are, again, as I said, from the 1930s. They're pretty dirty. I haven't really cleaned these, and I'm not sure that I'm going to. Sometimes people like to see old dirt, and that's old dirt. God bless our house. Here's another God bless our house. That one's funny, I'll let you read that. And she's chasing somebody with a frying pan. I guess she's trying to get them out of her kitchen. I think this is my favorite one here. It's the heaviest one too. Bless this house, O oh Lord, we pray. Make it safe by night and day. And that one is marked uh, Wilton on the back of it. These were companies, uh, Wilton was in Pennsylvania. Another one of these was made in Reading, Pennsylvania as well. And these were probably, as I said, all made in the 1930s. All right, so I paid $2 each, eight bucks total. I went to pay with a $10 bill and this was sitting out, they hadn't priced it yet, and I picked it up and I said, wow, that is a really good frame. So I said to the lady, oh, come on, let me have it for two bucks, you can take my whole $10 bill. And she did, and I got a really nice frame. This frame is circa 1910, maybe 1912, something like that. Excuse me, very well made. It was, and I said, when I was talking about that depression glass and speaking of fine department stores, this was sold by Stern Brothers. Uh, and for those of us here in the Northeast, we are familiar with the Stern Brothers store um, in New York, uh, Philadelphia as well. Uh, they opened up their first store in 1867. And then in 1913, they moved to their flagship store, which was on 42nd Street and 5th Avenue, I think. 5th Avenue and 42nd Street. But they were a fine department store. They catered to the... Uh, what do you call it, uh, the hoity-toities of the Gilded Age, you know, the carriage trade. And they actually had a separate entrance for people like the Golds and the Asters. But look how beautiful this is, it's gilded. I think you call this Ormolu. And uh, 
you can see the damask material the picture actually fits in that spot right there now the back of it is rough it's seen better days uh, but that's not a huge issue that the cardboard on the back is pretty worn out uh, it's just a beautiful frame and I think I'm gonna be able to ask close to fifty dollars maybe forty nine dollars for that frame uh, where are we now there's a little tiki mug well not little it's big I don't know who made it and let's not drop it you can see the tiki face on it uh, I think this sells for about maybe ten bucks online I paid a dollar for it ten or twelve bucks but I really really do not know who made it this is the last of my anniversary pieces I keep finding these I'm not buying anymore until some of them sell I have about 11 pieces for sale as I said, it's an, it's an experiment. That was a dollar, we'll move that out of the way so that I can show you this stuff back here. I don't know much about this. Maybe you can help me out, my friends, in the collecting world. Here's a tea set. It is complete with no chips. Yes, I said no chips. And it's amazing because this stuff is so delicate. It's almost like eggshell thin. So I'm being very careful. These pieces are marked Fleetwood China on the bottom. I haven't really done any research on that yet. But I'm guessing this was made for export sometime in the 50s. I don't know what you call this uh, type of finish. It's very thick and, and it sticks up. Uh, it's three-dimensional. It's almost like the paint was applied in globs. Um, I really don't know how to describe it, but it has a very rough texture to it, and you can see how it um, comes right up off of the off of the china. So I don't know why there are f six cups and saucers in blue, and the whole set is blue, and then there were four in green. Um, maybe these came to another set, and the set was broken, but they're obviously all made by the same company made in Japan and there's a lot going on here but it was only $12 for all of this stuff and I need to do a little more research to find out what it's worth and maybe a little bit more about the company that made it so I think I showed you almost everything I have a few more things to show you back here are nothing special they're eight glasses they are monogrammed with an R and so I'm hoping somebody with the last name starting with an R, will see these and decide to buy them. They're in pretty good shape. Actually, they're in very good shape. There's nothing missing from the silvering on them. Um, yeah, oops. And I'm gonna say they're probably, again, probably from the 1960s and they just have a kind of a mid-century barware look to them. You know anybody with the last name R? Send them my way. I would appreciate it. I don't know anything about jewelry. Um, but I saw this key first and all four pieces of these jewelry all four pieces of this jewelry were sitting right next to this key. So again, I said, well, to the lady, how much do you want for your Christmas pins? And she said, just give me a four dollar, a dollar a piece for them. So I made sure nothing was missing off of them. I like this one the best. Some of them are signed on the back, but you're not gonna, be, I can't see it without a magnifying glass, so I need to look them over uh, and see who the makers are. But I know it's just cheap costume jewelry, but some of these pieces can sell, I don't know, for maybe 10 bucks. These remind me of the things that the old ladies wore on their coats when I was a little boy going to church. Well, I still go to church, but I mean, when I was, you know what I mean. And if you're not an old lady and you wear these, don't get mad at me. I, I'm not being, I was just making a joke. Pretty cool. All right, so there's four Christmas pins. Again, I know nothing about them, but other than I think they're from the 1960s and it's costume jewelry. So I paid $4 for that. I really wanted this and I said to the lady and I said oh and by the way how about this old key she said oh okay you can just have the key so I spent four dollars for these and got the key for free 
I don't know what these are worth, but that's a $20 key. You know what that V stands for? Victor Victrola. It's a Victor, uh, Victor Victrola Talking Machine Company key. And this is the key that would unlock the mahogany cabinets on Victrolas. And that's what that V stands for. The nickel-plated keys sell for $20, $25. Bucks. The gold-plated keys sell for $30, $35. Bucks. And I have bought and sold several of these keys. So don't overlook skeleton keys. Uh, finally back here. Now, I knew this stuff was good, but I didn't know how good. Uh, I went to a flea market Sunday afternoon, and it was really cold. I couldn't wait to get out of there. But as soon as I got there, I saw these on a table. And I said, wow, they look really neat. Totally mid-century. I love this sort of firework starburst. Let me put this down because I do not want to drop these. Um, paid five bucks for, I think there's 13 of them. I had no idea that these are actually uh, designed by Russell Wright. Yes, the Russell Wright, the great mid-century modern designer. He did some dinnerware and glassware. I did some more research and found out that these are quite rare. This is one of the hardest to, f this is one of the most difficult patterns to find in Russell Ware glassware. And uh, it's valuable. I, I had a couple people tell me, um, you know, you should look, look this up and find out what it is. And, and it took a while, but the pattern is called asterisk and it is by Russell Wright. So, I don't know yet, but we're looking at probably at least $200 right here in this glass. Uh, maybe more. And these will be up for auction. I think I'm going to actually go ahead and do an auction instead of a buy it now. But I'll put a pretty hefty starting bid so that I um, get my money's worth. But again, they were only $5 and I'm really excited to find them. So that's my stuff right there. Uh, Thanks for watching everybody. And if you're up here in the Northeast like I am, uh, be prepared because most folks are gonna lose their electricity tomorrow. We're looking at high winds, blizzard conditions, and about 10 inches of snow. Heavy wet snow about one inch per hour. I'll let you know how I make out. I'll probably just hunker down, light the fire, put something in the crock pot, and do some listing on eBay. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is Scott in the old curiosity shop saying, so long for now.